Gamergate 2 is here, but unlike the first Gamergate, which was an orchestrated attack by the establishment gaming industry on gamers, this one is an organic grassroots counter movement by the gamers themselves against an industry that is in the process of destroying gaming in the name of diversity, equity and inclusion. As much as the establishment may want to purge the gamers that don't align with their values though, they're failing. And that makes them desperate. Gamers are now wise to consulting companies like Sweet Baby Inc. and the many others just like them, like Black Girl Gamers for one, and that has the establishment very upset. I mean, they even had Kotaku and other trades write distraction pieces that argue that Sweet Baby Inc. only does some mild consulting here and there. It's the game developers themselves that make the final call. Now, please let this go, don't look any more at Sweet Baby Inc., definitely don't look to see if there are any more companies just like them, and definitely, definitely, whatever you do, don't look behind that curtain over there into why these consultation companies popped up all at the same time around five years ago. But despite the pleas, gamers didn't stop. They did look for more companies like Sweet Baby Inc. And as for that peek behind the curtain, you just keep on watching. Recently, gamers have identified more companies like Sweet Baby Inc. and started boycotting the games that they worked on as well. And that has the establishment very, very cross with the gamers, which just caused a glorious mask off moment. Bounding into comics did a great write up on this. BBC gaming presenter Jules Hardy calls for current Sweet Baby Inc. discourse to end with a final purge of ideological opponents from the medium. Their write-up reads, In the view of BBC gaming presenter Jules Hardy, the best way for the current discourse surrounding Sweet Baby Inc. to resolve itself would be with a final purge of those players who are critical of the general presence of diversity, equity and inclusion-focused consultation companies within the video game industry. Hardy, perhaps best known to viewers of the government-funded British Programming Network for her having served as the host of 2021's Top Gear Gaming Show and 2017's The Gaming Show, shared her opinion on the aforementioned debate on March 22nd in response to a tweet from the narrative consultation company Black Girl Gamers. The backdrop here is that some random gamer had called out the sweet baby ink-like consultation company Black Girl Gamers, they responded in kind, and this then caused Miss BBC to share her true feelings, xing, can we agree that for round two of this Gamergate it can be the final purge of these kind of gamers? It's 2024. I have been arguing about this for decades. Can we have a last full detox of these dudes so we can get back to the positive gaming community we have been creating? There's a lot to unpack here, so let's dive right in. So, Miss BBC here wants to purge these kinds of gamers. Pray tell, what kind of gamers would that be? The kind of gamers that just want to play games without having them infused with commie messaging? Because really, that's what we're seeing here. That is who is speaking up. Not any particular minor subgroup of gamers, but the actual silent majority of gamers who have had it up to here with outside parties intruding into their hobby, changing it up by making it divisive, exclusionary, and hateful, thus removing what made gaming so special, unifying, and appealing in the first place in the process. Secondly, that's some language right there. Final purge. That doesn't sound nefarious at all, does it? It does, however, get right to the mindset of these evil, mean-spirited and hateful people that preach about diversity, equity and inclusion. With the mask still firmly off, Miss BBC wants a full detox from these dudes. And again, these dudes would be the silent majority of gamers. The ones whom there would be no gaming industry without. So they, meaning Miss BBC and her peers, can go back to the positive gaming community that we, meaning they, have been creating. Let that sink in. The positive gaming community we have been creating. 
there are some major implications in that that not everyone has spotted yet. Remember what I said earlier, the establishment gaming press instantly ran interference for Sweet Baby Inc. So you, the gamers, wouldn't look any more into more companies like them, Black Girl Gamers being one, and definitely, definitely don't look behind that curtain over there. Well, what Miss BBC just said there is an allusion to there being a curtain, and someone is behind it, and they have been creating what they see as a positive gaming community. Pray tell, what positive gaming community would that be? Well, presumably it would be the one we're seeing right now, where male characters are emasculated, female characters are uglified, and storylines are commified. And anyone who objects to this and just wants to play games without socially destructive messaging that contributes towards tearing the nation apart are attacked for it. That, evidently, is a positive gaming community in the book of Miss BBC, and the people on whose behalf she is speaking has created it. Ask yourself, why do game developers spend hundreds of millions developing games only to have companies like Sweet Baby Inc., Black Girl Gamers, and the many others like them come in and completely tear those games apart, rendering them completely destroyed and a subverted version of what they originally were supposed to be? Because that's what these consultancy companies do, they ruin games. Something World of Warcraft team lead Mark Kern recently confirmed had been done to Flintlock, as reported by That Park Place. What could have been a great game was completely and utterly trashed by Sweet Baby Inc., and no later attempt to fix it could undo the damage. And that's just one example. All of these companies utterly wreck what otherwise could have been great and commercially successful games. So why on earth do game developers hire these companies? Surely they must know by now what the end result is going to be, so why hire them? And also, why are there so many companies like Sweet Baby Inc., and why did they all pop up in the last five years? Could someone be forcing the game developers into hiring them? Uh, you have to force behaviors, and at BlackRock we are forcing behaviors. We do have that peek behind the curtain for you, but it's beyond the scope of this video, so we'll get back to it in the next one. To make sure you don't miss out on that, please hit subscribe and indicate you want notifications on all videos. And if you've already done that, but still don't get notifications, then please momentarily unsubscribe, and then immediately resubscribe, indicating once again that you want notifications on all videos. That refresh usually does the trick. With that, let me know your thoughts on this in the comments.